What's happening, Roland? Well, hey, this is the update of the week, and it's the third week of October. There's been a, a big, big cold front that's changed the fishing around. I'll explain that a little bit later. But this week, I've been doing a lot of work. I had to switch out all my batteries. Now, here's, let me just give you an update on batteries. This is the regular battery I took out of there. I've had it for two years. This is the, the Deep Cycle Marine battery. They're good for about 150 charges say roughly 150 charges and so now after two years of work in that boat you know they don't hold a charge quite as good so they're kind of, they're not not it's not they're not completely gone but they're just coming down some what now so i put new batteries in it okay now you've heard about the agm series now it, that's advanced glass mech technology it's a it's a different battery and it's good for like 300 charges okay now this agm battery Costs twice as much, but it lasts twice as long. So what do you want? I mean, it's about the same weight, and you get them in the same size. They, they, they do the same job. The one thing about the AGM batteries is they hold their current level and current their power all the way up to the end, and then they fall off. But they're, you can use them so much more longer, and, and, and they're, they're, they just last forever, and they're just a better battery. But they're twice as expensive. This battery right now, I went down and priced them at O'Reilly's. That same battery is like $110, $120. This battery here is $240, $250. Well, in the same size, in the same, uh, same big size. So it's twice as expensive, but it lasts twice as long. And if you want the best, we're well, going to have to get an AGM. That's, that's what I suggest. And, and so uh, and I used to work for uh, East Penn Batteries as well. And so O'Reilly's has their their Superstar series, but it's actually made by East Penn. And I've been up to see the plant. I've seen how they, they melt them down or recycle them. And they it's, a, it's the coolest process in the world. Uh, that uh, East Penn Batteries, by the way, is the second largest battery company in the world. 6,000 employees. And they make the best batteries. So I know I've been work, working with them for over 10 years. So I know all about East Penn. But they make the Superstart. Okay. So, okay. What I have here is, is I've redone my whole boat. Not only did I put new batteries in there, but I put the new charge system. Now, the charge system is by power pole. Okay. And what it enables you to do is also I put the new power pole trolling motor on here. So now I have, look at this. This is all what I've done this week. Look, see how it steers? It all steers remotely. And also, I have a foot pedal. It's so cool. This is such a cool deal. This foot pedal is also cool. It's so cool. Watch this. See how it steers with the foot pedal? And it goes on. And uh, then, and also, look, see this little display right here? As I hit, as I hit the, the controller motor and I, get, I want more power, Look, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, four, three, all the way up to like twenty. That's really good. But anyway, that's a big deal, and it steers left and right, and it's really, really a good thing. Now, in addition to that, <laughs> see that Lawrence? I've put the active target on this. Area. Now, look at this. Look at this. The active target is this forward-facing sonar. Now, I had it on a turret system. And uh, I got some issues. Uh, they, the people at PowerPole didn't want me to use the turret right now. Probably I'll talk them into it and I'll use the turret. But the, this is, the turret is independent of this. But anyway, what that is, is that transducer allows me to look out in front up to 80 feet or so and spot the edges of the hydrilla, spot the channels, spot the brush piles, and spot the fish. I don't always know what kind of fish they are, but that, that system right here works. And so I can go back and forth with the trolling motor, and I can watch my, my screen with my active target, and I can identify good structure, and I can identify the fish themselves. And so that's, that's all I've done this week. Now, put this whole big trolling motor on there. Now, okay, let's get in the boat for a second, if we can, or at least I'm going to get in the boat, and I'm going to show you something. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get up there. And also, oh, well, before we go any farther, I just want to show you these lights. Okay. These are these side lights that are kind of cool. Look at this. I got, see, I got the, the red on the, on the left and the green on the right, and it's also a little light on the, on the running light. And I, I like this light system. Now it's, it's all enclosed, and it's, 
it's better for salt water. Not that I use it much in salt water, but it, it's it's a better complement. Okay, okay. Let's uh let's get this uh, inside the boat. I want to show you what's going on. Okay, I put rod holders all on this boat now. Of course, I'm all set up for for my shiner fishing, and I got these rod holders all set up, and I do a lot of trolling. See, with my active target depth finder, I can work these edges of the grass, and I can work these these channels, and I can work these, uh, well, actually, they're irrigation ditches and all sorts of uh, stuff over there at head, head, Headwater Pond, and I can troll a shiner. And it's so cool to troll a shiner because this is 50 to 65-pound braid, and I just troll it real slow and easy. I put the clicker on this reel, and so when it's in this thing, it's like this. When he takes it, listen. That that's not too loud. That one that's not as loud as some of them. I got better reels. But anyway, that's so that's one of the systems that I'm using right now. Okay, let me let me show you this battery deal. Uh, this battery system right here is I have the the new charge system. Now, what the charge system is, is it allows me to charge all the batteries, but if I ever have a problem with the main engine battery, I can dedicate the power from these troll motor batteries to the main engine battery, and it all starts up. Now, these are all brand new batteries now. Everything's working just 100%. Everything is set up where now, if I need the emergency power, I can switch it over. So it's just a really super way to doing it. Okay. Now, in addition to all that, we have the active target itself. You notice these buttons are on right here. When I turn this on, it's really, really kind of cool. I'm not going to go through all the whole thing. But, again, all my switches are here. My power poles, again, I can do power poles from here. Or... Look at here, I can do the power poles on this on this little part right here. I can I can go. Okay, power poles go up. Okay, boom. They're up. Anyway, this whole system is so cool. I'll go ahead and pull this back in the boat. It's probably a little bit too long right now. What a setup. This is also let me tell you a little bit about this trolling motor. This trolling motor is 30% lighter and 30% stronger. It's got a titanium shaft. I got it down too far. Get it down a little bit. And so it'll fold up. But being being the titanium shaft, it's lighter. It's real easy to deploy. Look at look, look how easy it is. Just so easy. And it comes out. Look at look, look look how easy it is going down. It's just so easy. It's way, way easy. Anyway. Ready to go. Now, let's look at some rods and, and stuff over here in the side. If you come around this way, I'm going to show you something. There's been a cold front. And also, there's some cool water and, and warm water. Now, this is a thermometer. You notice this thermometer right here? It says right here on me. It's, what does it say, 90-something? 90, 90 degrees right there? 100 degrees. 100 degrees. <laughs> Now down here, look, it's it's a little bit, it's cooler. It's cooler at 90 right here. Look at it on the bottom of the boat. It's 80, it's 80 degrees down there at the bottom of the boat. It's 80 degrees. So I'm a pattern fisherman. I'm looking for that exact set of water and cover conditions that attract fish. So when I go out to headwaters, I might catch them in 80 degree of water one spot, and maybe I go to the next spot, it's 90 degrees. And that's not good. Maybe maybe they don't want 90 degrees. Maybe they want 80 degrees. So that's why I have this thermometer. Wherever I catch fish, I take the temperature. And when I do, that's what I'm looking for again. I'm looking for that temperature. So I can do it with this thermometer really good. So that's, that's the first thing. Okay, what would I throw? Well, to start with, I have to start with the top water flow. Look at this. That's Spro. That, that's that Spro 60, Pop 60. Now, this is the Pop 80. That's the Pop 80. That's the Pop 80. This is the, the Spro 65. That's the 60. Well, that's the 60 Popper. Okay. Anyway, 
I'd start with top order first thing in the morning. Another good combination that really, really pays off. Look at this little quarter ounce buzz bait. This is so cool. I got a, I got a little trailer on the back. Boy, it worked last week. I was catching fish on it right and left. Big small mouth. I caught all kind of fish on it last week. But I also caught some big large mouth on it. And that little quarter ounce buzz bait. Well, I can't. It's all wrapped around that line right now. I can't get it out. That is so cool. Now here's the really important part here. It clacks. This, this front blade kind of cracks. Clacks on the on the head. It's hard to hear. You don't hear it in order. But that trailer hook. The trailer hook really really pays off. So that's a dynamite combination right there. Okay. The second thing that I'd use right now. That's really, really strong. And I did it last week, just as the cold front hit. I went over to the headwaters area, and I was with the Jerry Brousseau, and we made a whole film flipping and pitching, and also this swim bait. That's a little bruiser swim bait, five inch, and it was really paying off. A lot of three, four pound bass. That day, we caught the big five and six pound bass on a big flipping stick, and I didn't bring my flipping stick out here, but I've gone through a lot of stuff with you on flipping, and I have all that flipping and pitching. So I do that a lot. Now, whenever I'm throwing a swim bait or throwing a top order or throwing that buzz bait, I'll often miss a fish. And how often did I say have a backup? Now, here's a, just a little trick worm kind of deal with the backup. And I have a, a this is a five inch little, uh, little Cinco kind of worm. I'm throwing it, I'm throwing it on that, on that little rod, and that's always a backup. And then, and then, and then when I'm drifting, the wind's blowing. Hey, you can't be either a spinner bait or a chatter bait. That that's a, that's a five eight ounce chatter bait for kind of a lot of wind. Um, sometimes it go a little bit lighter, but that's a perfect complement right there. I catch so many fish on chatter baits. It's so easy to fish because all you do with the chatter bait just throw out in front of the boat and just reel it in. There's not much to it. And sometimes we'll get doubles and triples, or we'll get little schools of fish like that. So anyway. There's been a cold front. It's changed the fishing for the good. It's dropped the water temperature about 10 degrees. Fishing are biting pretty good. I'm getting ready to go. My boat is 100% perfect. I got all my new batteries, all my new power pole, all my new everything. I'm ready to rock and roll, son. This is this is going to be a big week, and I got a bunch of guide trips starting tomorrow. So anyway, that's what's happening in my world. And uh, if you need more information about headwaters guiding, get a hold of Judy M at fishingwithrollermartin.com. That's how you get a hold of me and my guide service. But anyway, I enjoy you watching. And hit, the, hit that like button. Hit that uh, subscribe because uh, every, everyone helps. I was O'Reilly's and Bass Pro, they just go crazy. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you again soon.